ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله عز وجل وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه واله وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار all praise is due to allah we praise him we seek his aid and we ask for his forgiveness we seek refuge in allah from the evils of ourselves and the evil consequences of our actions whomsoever allah guides none can lead astray and whomsoever allah leaves to go astray none can guide I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped none has the right to our ultimate love and devotion but Allah alone who has no partners and I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger or you who believe fear Allah as he should be feared and die not except except in a state of submission and Islam to Allah O oh, mankind be dutiful to your lord who created you from a single person and from him he created his wife and from them both he created many men and women and fear Allah through whom you demand your mutual rights and observe the rights of your kins surely Allah is ever and all watcher over you O oh, you who believe keep your duty to Allah fear him and speak the truth he will direct you to righteous deeds and will forgive you your sins and whoever obeys allah and his messenger has indeed attained a great achievement the best speech is that of allah and the best guidance is that of muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam and the worst thing in the religion are the newly invented matters and all the newly invented matters are innovation and every innovation in the deen is misguidance and every misguidance takes its people to the hellfire there was a highway robber a thief very famous at his time he was in love with one girl and he had the habit of sneaking into her house some way and watching her observing her for some time and in night he would go and attack caravans hajj caravans travelers and he would strip them of their property and the wealth and their belongings he was notorious to the extent that a lot of the caravans were try most of the time would change route to avoid that area one night he climbs up the wall of the house of that girl that he loves and he sneaks into the house and he as he was making his way into the house someone was praying qiyam al-layl someone was standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and praying at night alone reciting the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alam ya'ni lil ladina amanu an takhsha'a qulubuhum li dhikrillah hasn't the time come yet for the believers that their hearts pay heed 
and feel humility to the words of Allah, hasn't that time come yet? And the words shook him and grabbed his heart. And he was moved deep inside. It hit a chord. He started thinking about these words and he forgot the main reason why he came to this house. And the only response that was on his tongue, his spontaneous response was, Bala ya Rabbi qad an. Indeed, my Lord, the time has come. And that moment he changed. So he went out of this house, roaming aimlessly, contemplating his life, contemplating his past, his behavior, his reputation, and his future, and his relationship with Allah. He ended up with a group of people who gathered together and they lit a fire and they were travelers, strangers. He asked their permission to join them. He sat with them and they were disputing whether to spend the night there or to carry on their journey. And one of them said, we should stay here because there's that famous thief, that famous robber. That's his area. And if we carry on traveling, we might, or he might jump on us and, you know, we'll be in trouble. So let's spend the night here. Then we will set off in the morning. And the name they mentioned, the name of that thief was this very person. It made him think to himself, what did I do that people fear me that much? What kind of curse I have become to humans, to humanity, that people don't even feel safe about their lives and about their property because of me. All of this made him question his life, question his way of life. And then he made the decision that I will change because it's my responsibility. It's not someone else's responsibility to change me and set me on the right course. It's my own initiative and if I don't take it, it might never happen and I will face the consequences on the day of judgment. And that's exactly what he did. And he became one of the famous scholars one of the famous worshippers in the history of Al-Islam and that's Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad. That's the story of Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad. Until today, the books that talk about our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to purify ourselves, how to become better Muslims, better believers, have dozens of his beautiful statements full of wisdom, who was one day a thief, famous one. What does that tell us? What lessons can we take from this story? Is that it's our responsibility to change. Life in general is about change. The whole story of life. Life is a game of change. If you play it well, you'll end up in paradise. But if you don't understand the rules of the game, you'll end up in the hellfire. And it's your responsibility to seek that knowledge and act upon it. Another famous scholar, he was an alcoholic. He was addicted to alcohol. He had no education whatsoever, no manners whatsoever. He was one of the worst people, the worst youth in his community, in his town. And one day, he was drinking alcohol with a group of his friends and he had it. He was the only one who would hold the bottle in his hand in public and drink. This is how shameless he was. This is how low his level of morality he had at the time. So he saw that group of people, people gathering around one man who was on, on his donkey. A huge number of people gathering around him. They seemed to respect him, speak to him, and everyone wanted to, ha wanted to converse with him. So that created some curiosity. He wanted to know who this man is and why these people are so keen to speak to him. So he went there and he came close to that man and he held, oh, he stopped the donkey 
and he said, who are you? This is how shameless he was. This is, it's that kind of character that he was. Who are you? People around said, this is a Sha'bi. This is an Imam Sha'bi. He said, who's a Sha'bi? Anyone doesn't know Imam Sha'bi? That's the famous scholar of Hadith. No one doesn't know him. You don't know Sha'bi? He said, who's a Sha'bi? What does he do? They said, he's a Muhaddith. He's a scholar of Hadith. Narrates the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, what does that mean? What does it mean to be a Muhaddith? They told him he's someone who narrates the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He memorizes it, he teaches it, that's what he does. He said, okay, if you are a muhaddith, then narrate one hadith for me, give me a hadith. Now this imam, and that's what the people of knowledge, oh, this is how they should be. He could read the situation, and he could read that man. So he wanted to give him something suitable for him. So he narrated the hadith to him. from a companion Abu Mas'ud al-Badri radiyallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said inna mimma adraka al-nasa min kalam al-nubuwwati al-ula idha lam tastahi fasna' ma shi'at he reported the hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said if you don't have shyness if you don't have this quality of bashfulness then you can do whatever you wish. Because there's nothing to stop you from doing shameless things. That moment, the heart of this man was open. So the word went straight into his heart. And after that, he decided to change. He decided to change his whole life. So he left his past behind and he went to the famous Imam, Imam Malik ibn Anas, the Imam of Medina. He went to him and he studied under him and he learned hadith from Imam Malik. And this man, this very man who was an alcoholic is the teacher of Al-Bukhari and Muslim. He became the teacher of Al-Imam Bukhari and Muslim. His name is Abdullah ibn Maslam Al-Qa'nabi. Famous, one of the most famous scholars of hadith, was an alcoholic. Was someone who had no manners whatsoever, no respect for anyone, that he would drink alcohol in public. And when he studied for long years under Imam Malik, he said, I need to see the person who was the reason for me coming to this way, to guidance. So he decided to travel to Al-Basra, where a Sha'bi was. So he goes there, as soon as he arrives, he finds out that Imam Sha'bi had already passed away. What is the lesson that we take from this story as well? <coughs> that life is about change. Life is all about change. You will never be the same person next year. You'll be different. But the question is, which direction have you taken? That's what Imam Shafi'i used to say. There's no standstill in this world. There's no standstill in this life. You can't stay who you are. You're either moving forward or going backward. So if you are not keen about moving forward, you'll find yourself going backward. Because if you don't change yourself, Shaitan is working full time to change you. That's his vow. That's the goal of his life. He dedicated his whole life for you. Just to destroy you. To make sure you end up in the hellfire. So if you don't counter that, his momentum will carry you or you will get carried away and he will take you in the direction he wants. So it's your mission, it's your responsibility to change and never want or never wait for anyone to change you. It should be your own thing. And if you were to look at the life of a Muslim, consider the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the life of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
the lives of the great people in the history of Islam, the great scholars, the great leaders. What were they doing? They were doing two main things. Changing themselves and changing others. That's what life is all about. You spend your life cultivating yourself, growing your spirit and your heart, your knowledge, progressing and helping others progress and grow. That's the story of life. And if you think that change is impossible, which is the case with the majority of us today, we feel helpless. We wait for some kind of strange occasions, occasion to take place and change us. We wait for that strange man of our dreams who's going to come and make things happen. We think that, we think that circumstances will change us. But you might wait forever and this occasion or this man never come to your life. What will you say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment? <coughs> the world will not change until you change. Because this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the world together. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah la yughayyiru ma biqawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusihim. Indeed, Allah does not change the state of a people until they have changed what's in themselves. So it's your own initiative. And this applies to your personal life and to the, to the Ummah as a whole. When we see the Muslims suffering today, in all Muslim countries, what's happening in Gaza, Palestine as a whole, Syria, even Egypt, even Libya, Kashmir, Chechnya, you name it. The, end, the list goes on and on. Why does that happen? And we, uh, we, we mainly think in military terms, but the reality is much deeper than that. Until we change ourselves, until we are willing to wake up for Fajr and come to the masjid, until we are willing to give up our bad habits, until we are willing to dedicate some of our time for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, until we are willing to go the extra mile for the sake of Allah, get out of our comfort zone, only then things will change because everything is linked together. The Prophet ﷺ told that to the companions many a times that you need to be aware of this reality. This world, this universe is connected together. You fall in a sin and you will see the, out the consequences, the outcomes of this, the consequences of this could be 20, 30 years later. Or maybe it will affect the Ummah in another corner of the globe, in the globe. You don't see it, but this is how the dynamics of this world works. Why was the Prophet Sallallahu sent to this earth with this message? What was he sent with? What did he do? He changed the people. Because life is about change. Look at it. Life is about change. And that's what the Prophet Sallallahu did. And change is possible because the Arabs at that time before the message was given to the Prophet ﷺ, were the lowest ummah divided amongst themselves killing one another eating dead animals worshipping stones doing filthy things yet when the Prophet ﷺ came 23 years they became the ummah number one on earth and the momentum was still there and the Muslim nation, Muslim Ummah expanded all over the globe from China to Morocco to Spain. All of this was because of the change initiated by the Prophet ﷺ. We still live on that legacy, on the remains of that legacy. We still live on that momentum. So we need to take life seriously. Which direction I'm taking in this life? What kind of change I'm making this year? Because you, can, you will never be the same person next year, the year after, the year after. So you either choose your direction or shaitan will choose it for you. There is no standstill in this world. But you need to change yourself. There are things you have to do. You need to wake up. Wake up from the state of heedlessness. 
If you feel good about yourself that you pray a couple of prayers a day or I pray the five daily prayers but you do different things you're happy about that you're proud about yourself wake up to the reality that no matter what you do for the sake of Allah it's never enough you should grow day in and day out you should be growing the moment you decide to stop you're you're being drawn downward by shaitan You need to wake up to the reality. Don't use happy talk. Don't say, oh, I give sadaqah. I give a hundred pounds a year every now and then. I pray for the sake of Allah. I fast Ramadan. What, what more than that does Allah want from me? But you do all sorts of other things. No matter what you do, it's never enough. Because you can never pay Allah back. You can never reach the real state of thankfulness that Allah truly deserves. So that humbleness is needed, that you try your best, but you still feel you've fallen short of the mark, because Allah is far greater than whatever you do, and His right upon us are greater. Something else you need to pay attention to, after you wake up to the realities about your shortcomings, about your weaknesses, about you not doing enough, is to hang around with the right people. The Prophet ﷺ says, ala A man, a person is upon the same religion as his close friends. The people you hang around with, this is who you are. Tell me, tell me who your friends are, I tell you who you are. You can't be different to them. Impossible, because that's against human nature. You have to find the right people. Mix with them, spend time with them, they'll inspire you. They'll change you and you will grow mutually together. We all know the story, the hadith, where the Prophet ﷺ mentions the story of the man who killed 99 people. Then he asked for someone to guide him. He was directed to a hermit. He told him there's no chance for you repenting. So he killed him and now the number became, his record became a hundred people. hundred murders. Then he was directed to a scholar. The scholar told him, nothing prevents you from repentance from the mercy of Allah, but you are in a town where people are mainly evil. You need to go to that town where there are good people so you can mix with them. Because he knows the impact of company, the impact of the people you hang around with. And thus he made his way there and on, and on the way he passed away. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ultimately made him from the people of paradise. So who are your friends? Who are the people you spend time with? You might say, I want to change them. But watch out, they might be changing you. All of these are important factors for us to change. When you are about to change and come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, start changing your habits. It's very useful to let the people around you know what moves you're making. Because if people around you or in the family know that you are a smoker, they will always offer you a cigarette. Or that you drink, they will always offer you a drink. Or you do bad things, they will always do the bad things in your presence and they will expect you to take part in it. And sometimes it will be hard for you to say no or refuse because the context is compelling and overwhelming. So you need to tell people that I have decided to make that change. And I'm not drinking alcohol anymore. I'm not smoking anymore. I'm not backbiting anymore. I will pray in the masjid. I'm not praying at home anymore. And so on and so forth. So people, you, you do this kind of communication. People are aware of that. So they know what to expect. And they will end up helping you inshallah. Then you need to take things easy. One thing at a time, one step at a time. Look at the most important things, your knowledge about Allah, your prayer, five daily prayers. If you have fallen short there, start with this. Once you get it right and it's fixed, it become part of your life, move on to something else. Start with the most important. Take yourself with ease and be gradual. Be gradual, don't jump to the tenth step. Don't leap. Take it easy, because that's against your own human nature. 
You need to take it easy. One step at a time, and that's what the Prophet ﷺ advised. This religion is deep and intense, so enter in it with ease and gentleness. That's how, these are some advice about how we can help change ourselves, move on towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, in the second part of the khutbah, I'll talk about how we can help change people. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Changing ourselves is not enough. In order to keep changing, we need to help others change. That's the sadaqah that you give for change. If Allah has helped you and enabled you to change and correct your ways, help others. It will help you create momentum. And that's the underlying principle of Al-Amr bil Ma'roof wa Nahi al Munkar. In joining the good and forbidding the evil. And we all know the story where the Prophet ﷺ talked about past nations. That there were a town indulging in sin. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent upon them punishment. When the angels of punishment came down, they found this one person. He worships Allah, he's righteous. So they said to Allah, there is one good righteous person among them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, start with him. Because he saw people sinning against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, violating the rights of Allah, and it never moved him. He had no resistance to that in his heart. He never gave advice. So start with him. Because Muslims are productive. Muslims don't only care for themselves, they care for others. And that's the premise for da'wah. That's the, promise for da the premise for da'wah. That's what the Prophet ﷺ spent his life doing. That's what the companions did. They traveled the earth, sharing the message of Islam. Don't be selfish. Share it not only with your words, but with your actions. They're more eloquent. Through your honesty, cleanliness, truthfulness, justice, kindness, care, attention, integrity. People sh should associate these meanings with Islam. But most of the time it's the opposite and we're responsible for it. So we need to change that state. When you see people around you, people falling into something wrong, don't think you're infringing on their personal rights when you, li when you, when you give them advice. No, you're violating their rights if you let them alone. If you let them do that sin, you are violating their rights. You're not being sincere. You're not taking care of them. You're not being or you're not acting as a real Muslim. That's why we have the concept of nasiha in Islam. And most of the time we misunderstand it. We think nasiha is only advice. Nasiha is a way of life. Nasiha in the Arabic language means purity of the heart. That you have a pure heart that cares for others, that wants good for others. That's what nasiha means. But one of its manifestations is when you want good for others is that you give them advice. That's all what it is. But the reality of nasiha is that you have a pure heart towards others. Concern for them. Just as the Prophet ﷺ had concern for his people. That even when they pushed him out of Mecca, when they caused him to bleed, they held stones on him. And the angel, Allah sent down the angel of the mountains. And Jibreel said to the Prophet ﷺ, he is the angel of the mountains. He can cause the mountains to collapse, fall on them, destroy them. He said, no. I'm hoping that Allah will bring from their descendants, their progeny, people who would worship Allah. And he would say, Allahumma ghfir li qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamun. Oh Allah, forgive my people because they don't know. After all the harm and pain they inflicted on him. And how, we, how do we do this? With gentleness and kindness. No harshness. That's how the Prophet ﷺ was. And he said, Allah gives for gentleness and kindness more than he gives for harshness. So this is the way of our Prophet ﷺ. And that's what Islam teaches us. Islam makes us the best human beings ever. It cultivates us in all aspects of human life. It teaches us the skills and the meanings we need for life. To lead a good, purposeful life. That's what Islam teaches us. 
اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الاحياء منهم والاموات اللهم كن للمستضعفين من المؤمنين في كل مكان اللهم انصرهم على اللهم انصرهم على عدوك وعدوهم اللهم ابرم لهذه الامه امر رشد يعز فيه اهل طاعتك ويهدى فيه اهل معصيتك اللهم حبب الينا الايمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره الينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان واجعلنا من الراشدين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد واله وصحبه وسلم